AWS or DigitalOcean? How do you make a choice? In this video, let's look at that. Hey there guys, how is it going? It is AB this side and in this channel we do a lot of stuff from programming tutorials to exploring fundamentals and even different aspects of the software development industry. Uh, so if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. In this particular video, we are actually going to take a look at two common cloud providers, uh, AWS and DigitalOcean and we are going to compare their benefits and see why you should choose one over the other for your next project. Now you must have heard about AWS, why? Because it's AWS, it's one of the most common cloud providers out there. And talking about DigitalOcean, where have we heard about it? Dear Builders, we know that right now... Oh yeah, we have all seen that particular ad. So, uh, how do you choose among these? Let's compare the pros and cons and see which one will be more suitable for you. AWS or Amazon Web Services is actually a subsidiary of Amazon, which is one of the major cloud providers. Uh, now, with a market share of around 33%, AWS is one of the largest cloud providers out there. And AWS is followed by Azure and Google Cloud and other such clouds, but uh, their market share is much less as compared to AWS, uh, which shows that AWS has a clear dominance in the cloud market. Uh, now with over 200 plus products and services, AWS has almost everything that you need. Now this can uh, cover things from services to networking, storage, uh, mobile application, Internet of Things, uh, security, etc. Uh, so if you have a look at the list of all the products that AWS has, uh, you will see it covers so many different domains and so many different uh, features that you might want to implement in your application. Uh, and it, AWS has all of these great things uh, that it is enterprise ready, that uh, you know large enterprises can easily uh, adopt AWS and its services. Uh, it is inherently scalable, so if you're trying to build, you know, something, uh, let's say, like an e-commerce website or uh, a website where you want to have a very proper system design, uh, AWS can help you with it uh, because it has several of the, uh, you know, features out of the box, uh, which you can directly leverage. Uh, and then it has a high performance guarantee, uh, which of course comes with, uh, you know, uh, experience and how AWS has been designed. So uh, that is all about the pros of AWS. Now, where does AWS lack? Now, AWS has a very complicated pricing model and uh, it can get costly unless you're managing your resources properly. Now, this is a case with, uh, with individual developers, startups, or even large enterprises. Uh, the other thing that is uh, troublesome with AWS is that with so many services that you have, uh, so the number of features can actually uh, get slightly intimidating and uh, you know the UI uh, can be slightly complex to deal with and in the end if you're trying to make something which uh, is very dedicated or you're trying to make let's say a, a startup in a particular uh, domain you might not be using all those features or all the uh, features which are available inside AWS. Uh, so as a result uh, it's actually you focusing on a particular set of features that you need and the rest of features getting wasted. Now let's have a look at uh, DigitalOcean. Now DigitalOcean uh, is an American cloud infrastructure provider uh, and they are not trying to compete with AWS. And instead what they're doing, they're actually going ahead and providing developers, startups or SMBs. Now SMBs are small to medium scale businesses with cloud infrastructure as a service platforms. Now their target audience is very different from the target audience of AWS and how it how they function is primarily through droplets now digital ocean droplets are simple scalable virtual machines uh, which are sort of similar to aws ec2 instances uh, other than droplets they have uh, some more features like spaces uh, they do have things like uh, you know management managed databases uh, and so on so uh, the good things that come with digital ocean is that it is easy to use it has a very simple ui and there are no hidden or you know complex payment or you know uh, it it cannot get costly without you knowing. So uh, as long as you are actually uh, shutting down droplets that you are not using, uh, you should be able to have a fair idea of uh, what cost you are going to incur through your startup or your project. Uh, and the number of features in this case are comparatively very very less as compared to AWS. 
So uh, that actually makes uh, it sort of a dedicated uh, platform for startups or individual developers. Uh, so what do we have as a final verdict uh, is that both of them are actually amazing in their own places and uh, they have a completely different uh, audience to uh, cater to. And AWS actually is good for huge projects or enterprises, uh, whereas DigitalOcean will be better if you're actually uh, an individual developer or a budding startup, uh, which is uh, going to work on a dedicated uh, field. Uh, so last week I had this poll on LinkedIn where I actually compared all the various different virtual machine services and AWS EC2 got the highest number of votes as being one of the most preferred VM services out there. So the purpose of this video was to make sure that you actually understood uh, the difference between all the different uh, cloud providers we have out there and in particular uh, AWS versus DigitalOcean. Uh, so as promised in our next video, we are going to uh, go ahead and uh, deploy something on AWS EC2 and uh, we'll also have a very interesting session about that. Until then, uh, make sure to like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.